This is a brief history of wrestling action figures for Action Figure Resource. Action. Figures. Resource. ActionFiguresResource.com The WWE, or WWF as it was formerly known, is widely regarded as the linchpin for this category of sporting entertainment. Founded in 1952 as the Capital Wrestling Corporation, or CWC, it was here that the traditionally stilted mat-based grappling sport was adapted by Jess McMahon and Joseph Mont into a more crowd-pleasing blend of boxing, Greco-Roman, freestyle, lumber camp fighting and theatre into what was dubbed slam-bang western-style wrestling. In 1979, the CWC was renamed the WWF, or World Wrestling Federation, and this precipitated a period of immense success with many new and extremely colourful characters. In terms of WWF action figures, the first were made in 1984 by LJN, who were also responsible for the Photon and Thundercats lines, and a host of video games, many of them movie licenses. These first wrestlers were 8 inches tall and had no articulation and were made of solid rubber, yet were surprisingly accurate and detailed for their day. There was also a line of thumb wrestlers which kids could literally wear on their hands. In 1985, Remco produced their own line of American Wrestling Association, or AWA, figures. These were articulated, unlike the LJN line, and resembled the Masters of the Universe toys, including cloth clothing and accessories. They also, unlike most wrestling figures, were frequently sold in packs of two or three, Remco had been around since the 1940s and were in decline at this point, having already filed for bankruptcy and becoming acquired by AHI in 1971. Their AWA line lasted only two years, through to 1986. LJN's non-posable line ran for five series until 1989, with the later figures as usual becoming the rarer and more valuable today. There was a sixth series available on black cards by mail order only. And there was a short period when LJN sold the WWF figure license to a Canadian company named Grand. LJN were going under at the time or they would never have let go of the license. And by 1990, after Grand failed to capitalise beyond some now rare reissues, it had passed to Hasbro. By 1995, LJN were no longer operating. Though in their time, as well as the line of wrestling figures, they published eight WWF games for Nintendo. The early 1990s was a hugely significant period for both professional wrestling and action figures. Hulk Hogan was now a household name, and Hasbro's line boasted articulation, action features, and occasionally accessories like Jake the Snake's Python, Damien, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Shears, and the Big Boss Man's Nightstick. This line only lasted until 1994, but it made a huge impression. Today, loose figures sell for mere dollars on the secondary market, while mint on American card examples fetch insane prices. There are four principal reasons. First, because they were so immensely popular at the time. Second, that they were very conducive to boisterous play. Third, that their audience were nearly universally not toy collectors. And fourth, and finally, the nostalgia for this particular period is very powerful. The competing Ted Turner-owned World Championship Wrestling, or WCW, saw three lines of figures over this period. The first was a non-posable line from Galoob, not dissimilar to the LJN WWF. This lasted two years, from 90 to 91. In 1994, the original San Francisco toy makers released similar rubber figures. And finally, in 99, Toy Biz picked up the torch, and over a two-year period released a more authentic, detailed series. This was in 2001 when the WCW ceased to be. Y continuamos diagonales en el campo de batalla. Pongan atención. Atlantis que pasa. Su nombre en aquella región descrita por primera vez. It's worth mentioning the Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre or CMLL, which is a major Mexican-based wrestling league that got their own line of non-posable figures around 1992. The CMLL were founded in 1933, well before the Capital Wrestling Corporation, and are still going today. A 1992 offshoot of the CMLL, 
the Asistencia Asesoria y Administración, or AAA, which again had a similar line of non-posable figures made by Kellyan. While we're on the subject of wrestling in other countries, Japan has its own line of frontier martial arts wrestling and New Japan Professional Wrestling, NJPW, each with their own line of figures. In 1995, Jack's Pacific, a company coincidentally co-founded by one of the founders of LJN, Jack Friedman, began producing WWF figures in a deal that would last more than 10 years. Jack's also acquired Remco, the makers of the AWA figures, in 1997. The Jack's figures were more sculpted, detailed and realistic to keep up with the changing times. They also began producing figures at another pivotal time in wrestling history known as the Attitude Era, when they began to pitch their characters as more edgy and dangerous. Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock were becoming fan favourites, ushering in a new generation. In 1999, original San Francisco toy makers released a line of ECW figures, that is Extreme Championship Wrestling, formerly East Coast Wrestling. These were similarly detailed and articulated to the Jax figures and lasted six series. In 2002, the WWF or World Wrestling Federation was renamed the WWE or World Wrestling Entertainment due to litigation from the World Wildlife Fund. This move forced them to retroactively censor all of their previous matches when re-aired or distributed on home formats, a ban only lifted in 2012. In 2002, since WWE had now bought WCW and ECW had filed for bankruptcy, World Wrestling Entertainment now held the monopoly. This prompted the inception of Total Non-Stop Action Wrestling, or TNA, which focused on spectacular pay-per-view matches. The action figure license was acquired by Toy Biz, who produced eight series of them from 2004 onwards, until 2009 when the license passed to Jax Pacific, who had just lost the coveted WWE license to Mattel after 14 years of figures. THQ were a major developer and publisher of video games from 1991 onwards, producing among many, many others no less than 32 wrestling titles. They filed for bankruptcy in late 2012 and had their studio and properties auctioned off shortly after. They were the second of three companies founded by Jack Friedman, along with LJN and Jax. Friedman passed away in early 2010 at the age of 70, a man intrinsically linked with bringing the world wrestling action figures, games and collectibles. Mattel remain at present the company behind WWE toys, they have been meticulous in the detail, sculpt and range of these figures, even keeping them at the same superstar scale as the Jax line with collectors in mind. Jax Pacific at the time of writing this are still producing TNA figures, along with many other toy lines including Ultimate Fighting Championship and Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> Figures. Resource. Actionfiguresresource.com.